Hey everyone, my name is Ryan and I'm the CEO and founder here at Upkeep and it is released Friday once again. This week's release includes a bunch of new updates for our web application. First up, we updated our purchase order module to make it include custom line items for parts, assets, and services that may not be in Upkeep already. Second up, we completely revamped our preventative maintenance module, making it even more configurable to your business's most complex PM schedules. And third on the list, we updated our request page, making it super easy to navigate so you can quickly approve, deny requests that come in. And so as a quick reminder, if you want to check out all the newest, latest, greatest updates and releases, you can go to our website and find all of the most recent uh, product releases. So with that being said, I'm going to pass it over to the Upkeep team to share a little bit more in depth about the latest and greatest new Upkeep updates. Thanks. Happy Friday, everyone. I am so excited to share this feature with you today. Uh, so now when you go into Upkeep and create purchase orders, you now have the ability to add custom line items to purchase orders. So, you know, as before, you can, of course, add your parts to a purchase order to pull in the cost of those purchase or the, those parts and order a quantity of them. But here in this more action section, you now have a button which says create custom line item. You can use this to add any, you know, thing that you need to buy sort of for your maintenance program onto a purchase order and, uh, in order to track that cost. So, you know, maybe we needed to pay for contractor services and, you know, we paid $50 an hour for three hours or something like that. Now you can create a purchase order with these custom line items. Uh, and that purchase order will go through, you know, all the same steps where you'll create it. It'll go through an approval flow. Uh, it can be approved. Uh, or declined, edited along the way, and ultimately fulfilled to say, you know, maybe you receive parts for, for services, you can also fulfill those, uh, and the purchase order ends up being closed out. When you download uh, PDFs for a specific purchase order, it will also include, you know, the um, any sort of line items that are custom here, as well uh, as, you know, showing up here and contributing to the total. Uh, yeah, again, the, the purpose here is to, to give more and more flexibility about what you can purchase within Upkeep uh, so you can sort of really track a full picture of, of what the cost of running your maintenance program is. Uh, so excited to hear how you guys use this and what feedback you have. Please keep the feedback coming uh, and we will continue to make improvements to our parts and purchasing system. Thank you. Hey everybody, my name is Nate Parsons and I'm one of the product managers here at Upkeep. And today I'm gonna to show you the preventive maintenance PM refactor that we just recently released. This is now going to be active for everybody. And uh, first I'm gonna start with creating a PM where you now only have the one option. There's no longer a, a no asset or single asset or the multi-asset PM. All of that can be done in one. And now I'm going to just put in some light amount of information in here and I'll select a checklist. And this is all of the details that will apply to every single work order that is populated from this PM, everything that's triggered. Next, I can move over to the schedules tab. And this is where I select between calendar meter readings and the option for both. So something like 6,000 miles or every six months that would trigger a work order for this. I'm going to start with just the calendar and I'll say every 100 days and it'll populate 10 days before. And next I can move on to the records. And what this allows me to do now is add just locations or I can add the assets there as well. So previously, we could not have just a line item with a location or just an assignee, uh, but now you can actually break them out where it will be um, different for potentially different sites. And this is just to cover all of the different scenarios that you may have. So I wanna make sure that I apply each of these schedules for these records, and then I can change the start date out into the future for any of these if need be. So that way they'll operate on their own independent schedules as well. So every 100 days, that first work order will be on 719, 918, so on and so forth. And then I can go through and assign them to the different people 
uh, as may be necessary or teams for these. So I'll go ahead and create that PM. And now you may notice that because the, I have these roll up schedules, some of the information is not rolled up here. We will have future releases that actually display that from this list view level. Clicking into this PM, I can now see each of those schedule records that had been created. Uh, we have all the same functionality. You can move columns around if need be and um, rearrange and save your views as necessary. Now, if I would like to edit one of these schedules or records, I come over to the ellipsis on the right hand side and I can edit just the details for that one. Again, we will be bringing in some bulk editing to this portion as well. So you can maybe mass change assignees and so on. Next, I will have the ability to go in and edit my details, which is all of the work order data. So this is, again, the work order information that will apply to everything. So I can come in here, change the checklist, add tasks, et cetera. And as I move through the details, you can see all that information and any work orders that had populated from this point. We haven't hit those yet because of the, uh, the schedule data there. And lastly, if I want to add schedules, um, this allows us to do it in bulk. So you can um, recreate your schedule and then come in and then again, add more locations, add more assets all in bulk. Hope this helps. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Today, I'll be showing you the new request list view and filters. We added the additional columns and data plus filters so that users can more easily find and navigate through their requests, uh, where previously there was very limited information that was displayed at what we call the list view. So as you can see, we now have a lot more column options. They're all configurable based on if you would like to view them and the order that you would like to view them in if uh, some of this information is not relevant to you, as well as filters. Prior to this, if you were looking for a specific asset or a request against all of the specific assets, you would have to open them one by one. So we opened this up so that way you can now come in and say, hey, I wanna, I wanna search for uh, this asset. And if I select that, now I can reduce down that list. I can see all the information based on who submitted it and navigate in to actually view those requests from this point. A lot easier, a lot quicker for everybody to navigate and get their work done. Hope this helps. Thank you.